Hello again. I'm Richard Knight, President of the American Association of Kidney Patients. Thank you for joining us for the 47th Annual National Patient Meeting. As part of the AAKP-initiated Decade of the Kidney, AAKP has purposefully targeted kidney research as a strategic priority for involvement and impact. Our national and global patient advocates and affiliates have been actively reaching out to all involved in the kidney science and research enterprise to offer their expertise and insights. At AAKP, we know that medical innovation and public policy are shaped by research and without patients as active partners, future innovations in kidney disease and kidney disease care would not reflect our practical insights and lived experiences. Further, since research impacts public policy, including regulatory decisions and issues related to what new drugs and devices are paid for by government and private insurance, it is critical that patients work alongside research experts. Again, this is why you see so many messages from AAKP about opportunities to join a research project at a university through the federal government or PCORI. Our goal is to populate and impact every single kidney research project underway in the United States and across the globe. And as you will hear, we have been helped by research professionals in academia and government who want to work with you and AAKP. For today's session, patient consumers elevating and including the diverse voices of patients, I'm pleased to welcome several presenters whose work and personal commitment are for greater care choice and ending desperate health outcomes among communities who suffer the most from kidney disease. Our next presenter is another good friend, Dr. Kamyar Kalantar Zeta, who's a professor of medicine, public health, and nursing sciences at the University of California, Irvine School of Medicine, better known as Dr. Cam. My friend, I turn it over to you. Thank you very much for the opportunity to present. This is Cam Kalantar again from University of California, Irvine. And I would like to share with you something about twice weekly and incremental hemodialysis. And then if uh, there is a, uh, there are a few minutes at the end on nutritional interventions. So dialysis versus no dialysis is, is handled as a dichotomy. Patients are often say that, would you like to start dialysis or go to the other path of palliative care? Whereas uh, that has been discussed, there are other options. For instance, conservative management, expanded use of palliative care, gradual transition to dialysis, and palliative dialysis. Now I'm going to talk about gradual transition to dialysis. Now, as you see here, dialysis can be done later or earlier. Dialysis is how it's done. It's earlier dialysis that has been the norm, later dialysis, and never dialysis. Now, if you look at here now, I would like to highlight here what is called supportive care, and it's a valuable option. However, there are also other options, such as the earlier dialysis, but here we're going to now focus on multimodal integrative management, delaying dialysis, and when dialysis needed, incremental transition to dialysis. So this is the kidney chart that I just share with you, preservative management, symptom management, palliative care. However, we would like here to highlight incremental transition dialysis and preservation of residual kidney function. So conventional dialysis is the one that is started, they use the keyword start or initiate three times a week. However, this is blueprint of incremental dialysis. As you can see here, we start this with twice weekly dialysis, and then we move on so with residual kidney function. So we, each box means dialysis treatment per day. Now twice weekly dialysis, residual kidney function lasts longer, and then it goes to twice weekly dialysis when patient needs twice weekly dialysis. Not from the beginning; it could be three months, three years, longer, shorter interval between 
initiation of twice weekly and conversion or increase to twice weekly. Now, over time, it could go to four times a week and then 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years later, when there is need to adjustment, it will again go back to three times a week or twice a week, which we call a decremental adjustment for dialysis. So let's move on, as you can see here. Let's go to the next slide now. I would like to highlight here, of course, this was uh, the highlight of what we said. How is twice weekly evaluated? Who is eligible? So with uh, one click, I'm going to highlight here urine output. Urine output needs to be adequate. And with the next click, I'm going to highlight here kidney, residual kidney function or kidney clearance. Now there are other requirements or, or suggestions added here, but the first two ones are the most important ones. That means a patient who makes enough urine over half a liter or who has adequate clearance with using residual kidney function. Now, if you look at here, we suggest every three months, if not every month, to measure residual kidney function in a patient who has the privilege of being on less than three times a week uh, in center dialysis or at home less at lower frequency. Now, here with this one, where I'm going to do three clicks. Click one is this, click two is twice weekly dialysis schedule, Monday, Thursday, Tuesday, Friday, and Wednesday, Saturday. And the next one is also different versions of uh, scheduled in a dialysis center if it is in-center hemodialysis for patients or at home. If I say that for home, you only, only need twice weekly dialysis for now because you make a lot of urine, my uh, amazing patient. Now, next you will see here, uh, highlighting what we, we are practicing in our center, Monday, Thursday, Tuesday, Friday, Wednesday, Saturday. For example, some of my patients on Wednesday, Saturday, and I usually round on these, uh, my patients on Mondays and Fridays. So for me, it's difficult to go on Wednesday to see that sporadic Wednesday, Saturday patient, but I've done everything in my power to make sure that patient feels happy and content. So now, incremental dialysis can also be done at home, as we mentioned. Ms. Nyolja Jetney, who is a patient leader, has been on uh, two to three times weekly home hemodialysis, thrice weekly usually, home dialysis for a number of years and still makes a, a substantial as your kidney function. Next one is uh, highlighting what we would like to be precision medicine in end-stage kidney disease. And when I say end-stage kidney disease, it doesn't matter end-stage renal or end-stage kidney, end-stage is a negative word or has negative connotation. Same with failure. I understand we call this kidney failure, but if we click, I, I'm going to click one more time and so that you see here, kidney dysfunction requiring dialysis. It's not a failure. If it were a failure, one of my patients who was on dialysis for 41 years, he wouldn't be, he would be a failure for 41 years. He was a success story. So again, as you can see here, kidney dysfunction requiring dialysis towards precision medicine in kidney dysfunction requiring dialysis. All right. So when patients in this pilot study by Dr. Murray in the East Coast of the United States Wake Forest, when patients were randomized to twice weekly versus twice weekly for six weeks, it was quite amazing that over time, the hospitalization of twice weekly patients who were randomized to twice weekly was less, quite remarkable. And here you can see now our soon to be started study, and this is called INCHVETS or incremental dialysis in veterans. It's going to be run in six dialysis centers in the United States. Veterans who need to start dialysis are going to be randomized to start as a start of care twice weekly or 50% of them will be randomized to twice weekly. And uh, this is essentially what you see here, uh, 252 veterans in, two, in six VA centers. You see here uh, our outcome measures, we are going to ask them every few months how they feel. That's a physical school of quality of life, dialysis symptoms, scores, energy fatigue, and we're going to also follow their residual kidney function and nutritional status. We're going to also have a sub-study. In the sub-study, we also look at uh, additional nutritional markers, but also echocardiogram to make sure 
that twice weekly dialysis is safe and adequate and does not cause any harm to the heart. So that's an overview of our InchVet study in six dialysis centers from 2022 to 2027. And this is an overview of uh, a patient who starts first two weeks of center of care, then 50% chance to continue twice weekly and 50% chance to switch to twice weekly for 12 months. And during these 12 months, if patient needs more dialysis, patient will have crossover to twice weekly dialysis. So that was the overview. Now we'll go to the next slide to go over a few questions. For example, what is the best schedule for dialysis patients? Monday, Friday, Thursday, Saturday, can we have Monday, Wednesday, Wednesday, Friday? That means two short dialysis days and then five days, no dialysis. Probably it's not a good idea. The best is three days and four days. Next question is what about highest mortality after long interdialysis intervals? Likely this is in those without a residual kidney function. Is there a drop in physician reimbursement? No. So if physician is worried that, hey, if I do twice weekly dialysis, I may not collect enough money, that's wrong. That's a misconception. Tell your patient that's not the case. Is there loss of dialysis center Medicare fee collections? Maybe, but in short term, maybe in long term, if our dialysis patients live longer, that's the best achievement beyond all of these collections. What about don't offer twice week to patients because patient never switch to twice weekly? That's also another misconception. A patient who is part of the team and runs the team, is head of the team, will never say no to a doctor who tells him that, hey, it's not time for you to increase frequency. Next question is, uh, uh, what about at home? Yes, incremental dialysis actually for home patients, such as next stage, such as Tableau. Start with less frequent and go higher. Next one is about, uh, what about AKI on, on rigid kidney function? Yes, the same way that acute kidney injury could happen when you are not on dialysis, could also happen when you are on dialysis. So this is a new era. We need more data. Now, two more questions. Next one shows uh, how about once a week dialysis yes go for it but we start here twice a week but we need more data on once a week if somebody makes so much urine that needs only once a week and the last statement is about how about decremental and palliative dialysis yes when patient needs less dialysis for example going to hospice that could be also offered now going to the next slide i would like to touch base with you so let's click here four times because I would like to go over the same four clicks and conservative management, expanded use, gradual transition and palliative dialysis. But now if you click here, I would like to uh, focus on conservative and preservative management. And this is, if we click twice here, now I would like to share with you one more time that a diabetic patient who eats more, suddenly the GFR goes up. And if you click one more time, we'll see that a non-diabetic patient, also the kidney function goes up within two hours after receiving amino acid infusion, which is essentially after eating. So this increase in GFR is physiologic, but happens more so in a diabetic patient. I would like to highlight here an increase in amino acid. That means when I eat a lot of protein in my blood, it opens up my glomeruli. In short term, it's what I need, but in long term, it's going to hurt my glomeruli, having kidney transplanted glomeruli or my own glomeruli. When I try to avoid too much protein, especially too much animal-based protein, then the amino acid surge is low and the glomeruli are under less pressure. To highlight that if you eat more protein, short-term effects is to increase GFR. If you eat less protein, especially animal protein, in, in uh, over time, there will be less load over the uh, glomeruli. This is essentially, you see a few comments here, high protein diet is bad for kidney unleashing the taboo. What's the taboo? That you need to eat a lot of protein to lose weight. Here, discussions over social media about high protein versus low protein, the animal-based versus uh, plant-based. And the next is highlighting uh, high uh, protein diet could be harmful even for healthy kidneys. So the effect of high protein diets on kidney health and longevity has been discussed in this paper in the Journal of American Society of Nephrology. Now, what is requirement for normal protein? The requirement for normal protein is only 0.8 grams per kilogram per day. 
And I want to highlight this for those who are worried that if I don't eat enough protein, I, my body doesn't get enough protein. That's not true. Actually, we all eat way above the requirement, recommended allowance, which is 0.8 grams per kilogram per day. So in the past, it was recommended that if we eat less protein, it has to be high biologic value, such as meat. Nowadays, we say actually the opposite. We say 50% of the protein should come from plant-based protein. With this, we would like to juxtapose the old paradigm versus the new paradigm. So the keyword here is plant dominant, PLA, plant dominant DO or Play-Doh. Play-Doh diet essentially is a diet where the amount of protein is less than high protein diet are what we eat, which is 0.6 to 0.8 grams per kilogram per day. And over 50% of the protein is from plant-based. And here, the Plafon study, that means plant-dominant or plant-focused diet for diabetic patient has been highlighted here. This is our next study. That's uh, where we randomized CKD3, 4, and 5 patients, not on dialysis, or transplanted patients who have diabetes to standard of care, which is low potassium renal diet, and the Plafon uh, diet, which is a type of Play-Doh diet, with low glycemic index. And I would like to highlight the message that dialysis gives life. However, we're not here to start dialysis too early or too much. When dialysis is done correctly, it means life, it gives life. And I would like to acknowledge a great friend and colleague who was the embodiment of this message and lived for a number of years to ensure that dialysis patients are proud about what they're doing. So I'm going to say that in summary, in patients with moderate to advanced CKD, the goal is to prolong and preserve kidney function and to delay dialysis. Transition to dialysis should be gradual. There is no reason to force everybody to start the same thrice weekly in center or same five times a week at home or same for several exchanges of PD at home. Traditional innovative interventions are needed with low and very low protein diet plant's dominant diet. And today we discussed about incremental transition to dialysis. We, dis uh, we talked about uh, the research that's about comparing twice weekly versus uh, center of care, comparing plant's dominant diet. And these are research uh, projects that are ongoing and I appreciate for the opportunity to share them with colleagues and with great patients. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Cam. As always, an excellent and very informative presentation.